We have a great show for you planned today. Viva Fry comes back and joins us. Of course, he's an attorney. He's the host of Viva Fry and the legal show we co-host with Viva and Barnes. Check out uh, vivabarnes.locals.com as well as on X, the Viva Fry, F-R-E-I, short for Fry Height. And he's joined by a Canadian mom who is uh, allegedly paralyzed after a COVID booster. And uh, if that weren't startling enough, as opposed to... Um, giving her medical services to assist her with what is now uh, a lifetime of quadriplegia, uh, their plan was to give her assisted suicide. So I, I saw her on a Viva show, and I thought we had all get together to discuss this. We have amazing guests coming next week and beyond. I will get with you. Uh, I'll tell you the whole lineup after this. Our laws, as it pertains to substances, are draconian and bizarre. The psychopaths start this way. He was an alcoholic because of social media and pornography, PTSD, love addiction, fentanyl and heroin. Ridiculous. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a doctor for <laughs> sake. Where the hell do you think I learned that? I'm just saying. You go to treatment before you kill people. I am a clinician. I observe things about these chemicals. Let's just deal with what's real. We used to get these calls on Loveline all the time. Educate adolescents and to prevent and to treat. If you have trouble, you can't stop and you want to help stop it. I can help. I got a lot to say. I got a lot more to say. So whether you have three minutes in the morning or 30 minutes to keep your face wrinkle-free, I want to introduce you to Gen 90, the new instant wrinkle cream from Genucel. Gen 90 instantly reduces the appearance of wrinkles anywhere you use it, around the eyes, the forehead, the crow's feet, the laugh lines, even the chin. It starts working in seconds. Never worry about your skin or your confidence again. Gen 90 technology is luxurious, nourishing, and silky smooth. And best of all, it starts working, as I said, in just seconds. And now you get Genucel XV, the collagen builder moisturizer with vitamin C and hyaluronic acid in a pure natural base for stunning results day after day. Our friends at Genucel have upgraded Susan's personalized skincare bundle to include their brand new Gen 90 for immediate effects at genucel.com slash Drew. Before you go overseas to get harsh procedures for thousands of dollars, try that Gen 90 first. Order right now at genucel.com slash Drew and you get a free luxury beauty box that includes their incredible neck treatment and free shipping that is genucel.com slash drew g-e-n-u-c-e-l.com slash d-r-e-w and welcome back as i said i wanted to throw up the schedule for you before we bring my guest in here brett weinstein in here on tuesday uh dave rubin at an early time on wednesday it'll be one o'clock pacific kevin bass uh who is now kicked out of medical school dr victory will be back with uh him and uh, is Corolla on for the 12th, Susan? Are we still doing that? I don't know yet. We don't know yet. But Fail is on for the 13th. Yeah. Christina, An Christina Anderson, the, the firebrand um, from the European uh, Parliament, is coming with us. Mike Benz, she said the bar's doing a fire, an incredible job here. And uh, my apologies if my energy level seems a little bit down today. I had a little procedure, orthopedic procedure yesterday. And given Kayla's story, I do not want to complain good. about it. But uh, just if I run out of steam, that's what that's all about. It's uh, not a big deal, but uh, successful procedure nonetheless. So let's bring in my guest, which is Kayla Pollock, a 37-year-old mother from Ontario, Canada, who uh, after a booster, she'd had the Pfizer series and then had a Moderna booster in order to go see her father in an extended care facility, and very quickly after that, developed severe neurological symptoms. And of course, Viva Fry, I already told you where you can find uh, David Fryheit. Uh, of course, uh, let's see, I said X, it's um, help me, Viva Fry, get in here, give me all your particulars. I already lost track of my page. There it is, the Viva Fry, oh, F-R-E-I. Yeah. Kayla, it's, thank you for joining us. Yes, there we are. Thanks for having me. It's you bet. And Viva, I, before I get a chance to hear Kayla's story, I, I I think I really caught on to her story through you. You were, I mean, particularly for me, the thing that was the standout. Uh, I, I know for, from Kayla's perspective, it may not there may be quite a bit more that stands out in terms of the subjective experience she's having, but this idea that someone with quadriplegia was offered assisted suicide is, is that am I getting that right? And what was your take on that? Well, and Kayla will tell that part of the story on her own. I mean, th this is how I see tweets going around where the story is of a Canadian woman, you know, rendered a quadriplegic from a booster. All right. And then to add insult to injury, 
the, the reporting is that the government offered her what we call up in Canada maids, medical assistance in dying, a, a, euth a euphemism for euthanasia or, you know, what other eras used to call mercy killings. And it's been a big issue in Canada because since the Trudeau government took over, 2016, the Supreme Court decision came down and said, we're going to expand euthanasia um, because, you know, it, it's, a, it's a constitutional right. And so they wanted to expand it to... Uh, eventually, the mentally ill, which was drafted into the law, mm. they want to expand it to people who are not suffering from terminal illness. They want to expand it to drug addicts, potentially. They want to expand it to minors who can't even consent. And year over year, euthanasia numbers have been not doubling, but pretty, pretty damn close to the point where in 2022, the number was give or take 14,000 Canadians were euthanized, wow. uh, rendered, oh my goodness. given... No, no, in Quebec, it was the third leading cause of death for a while. And in Canada, it represents now 4.2% of all death. And you hear these horror stories that you say, it's unfathomable. Uh, veterans with PTSD calling veteran services and being unsolicited offered euthanasia. And then the government says, oh, it's just a one-off. It's an accident. We're going to retrain. And then I hear this and I'm like, it, it can't be that after, you know, basically terrorizing and injuring a Canadian citizen, the government says, well, we don't really have the ability to take care of you. Have you thought about offing yourself? It's just, it, it turned my stomach to hear. And then Kayla and I had a long uh, discussion where she explained everything. And that's, that's, that's what happened. I want to get into that. And if you can't tell, uh, Viva is a huge fan of the Trudeau, Trudeau himself and the government, uh, especially. Uh, so, but I, I have, um, uh, you have, um, uh, I've found great, uh, solace in, uh, Viva's, uh, vitriol towards towards some of the stuff going on the excesses up there i'm going to hope and pray that that 14,000 was properly used i mean there there is such a thing as proper use of this kayla's situation is clearly not as with the veteran with ptsd and and it is the excesses of course that people recoil against when they think about advocating for this kind of thing uh now usually in this country they go oh doctors will start killing patients no 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 it's not that it's something far more pernicious that systems get put in place, offering desperate people an option long before they should be receiving treatment. Uh, this is the part that that makes everyone in my world crazy. So, Kayla, I, I'm going to let you tell your story. So you were uh, going to see your dad. You'd had the Pfizer vaccine. What, what was your sort of position on vaccines uh, going in to get that Moderna booster? Um, I've never had any side effects from a vaccine. Definitely would not call myself an anti-vaxxer or anything like that. Um, I did think it was quick and I didn't agree with the decision to basically, I feel like they forced us or coerced us into, um, to having the vaccines in Canada. I'm not sure what it was like in other countries, but, um, I went to get the vaccine and not just that, that I felt that uh, um, before we had a trucker convoy here, it seemed to be all over mainstream um, media and everything. We had a vaccine passport. Um, you couldn't go all sorts of places or, or do anything really if you didn't have this vaccine passport. And um, one of those things included um, like visiting people in long-term care um mm -hmm. and um so anyway to have the vaccine you had to have this vaccine passport and nobody was really sure how many vaccines was gonna were gonna be the end of it so they were, were talk about like um there was talk about uh mandating a third vaccine at, at some point and of course this is all information going and i'm sure in any country you know the who is saying one thing the cdc is saying something you got like your prime minister saying something and, you know, everyone's kind of going around in circles, which I, I can understand. Um, it had nothing to do with my political views um, or anything like that. I thought, especially I was told on, on the, um, on the, like on TV and on the media, I was told, you know, make sure you get vaccinated because you have a comorbid condition, you know, you're type one diabetic. So make sure you get that vaccine because COVID could kill you. You're much more likely to die from these illnesses, no matter how um, healthy, you know, your diabetes might be, you're more likely to pass away from it. So that was sort of my, 
my um, my reason for for getting the the vaccine. And time. describe what happened after you received the vaccine, what your symptoms were, and what went down. Well, within a matter of days, I fell to the floor, and um, I I have had an epidural before um, for pregnancy, so C section. So I know what pa being paralyzed feels like, kind of just from that. And it felt just mm. like it, but I that didn't connect with me. I thought I had just sort of woken up, gotten out of bed and, you know, pinched a nerve, something had happened. And um, within a matter of, let's say, 20 minutes or so, um, give or take, I was able to get back up and everything was fine. There was no pain. There was there was nothing else. So um, a, a, a little bit of time passed and that happened a second time. And at that point in time, I decided that this was something very, very severe sounding to me that this is happening. Um, but uh, my, my, uh, I called my doctor and said I needed to get in to see a neurologist. Um, there was a discussion that if I went to the hospital, they would just say in here in Canada, they just say, you know what, come back when it's happening. So if you don't go right when, when it's happening, you don't get fancy tests like an MRI or anything. Wow. Um, so unless you're really lucky and you get the right doctor, I guess. And then uh, within um, within a, a matter not too long after that, um, I woke up completely um, paralyzed from the neck down. Couldn't couldn't move anything below my neck, um, and couldn't uh, couldn't do anything. Could and I couldn't scream. I couldn't like. Um, like it was, it was very scary, but I'm like, why am I, I knew, I knew that there's no, like, I, I knew I was like essentially quadriplegic at the time. Um, and I couldn't figure out why. And so I was able to tell a friend of mine to call 911 and, um, who happened to be over that night and, and 911 was called 911 was good. Um, but as soon as I got to the hospital, they said, you know, this is, this is faking, um, you're faking being quadriplegic. So I was, you know, tossed in a hallway with hundreds and hundreds of other patients that were there during COVID. And then, uh, finally a doctor came along and he whispered in my ear and he said, I don't think you're crazy. I don't think this is all in your head. Cause they had told me I had some sort of psychiatric reason for this without any of giving me any tests with no prior hmm. Um, episodes like this. So, so it was eventually. Am, am I correct that it was eventually diagnosed as transverse myelitis? Is that correct? They it actually was. saw it That's in correct. MRI. Okay, all right. So, transverse myelitis, uh, Viva. I don't know if you are aware, but transverse myelitis is a classic vaccine reaction. When when I give vaccines to patients, uh, I worry about the acute allergic type reactions, which I've seen a few of, and those are highly manageable. But the thing that can be devastating is transverse myelitis. And as Kayla is describing it, it's usually at a very, very specific spinal cord level. Like you can just draw the anatomy. I'm guessing you're like about a C2? Is that about where you it are? C3 yeah. level? Yeah. Went up to the and C2. so she's at C... Yeah. And, uh, and now... Now and it then it's everything below is out right, and so um, the the yeah but but the 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 interesting thing is sometimes it comes back right not everybody gets permanent paralysis from this so what have they told you about that what kind of treatments have they tried what, what's going on with that that part and so how long has it been? It's been two years. Um, I've only gotten worse because they don't pay for um, physiotherapy here. So it's about twenty to forty thousand dollars a year um, for a quadriplegic to receive the right type of therapy. Um, mm -hmm. They didn't really tell me. Uh, they told me right away that it wasn't going to restore um, things that I had. Um, basically, that um, the steroids that they were giving me, they hoped I could get some arm function back, which I did get a little bit of that right. back. 
but oh that's um, good that's yeah that's that's what they do usually yeah. slop on is a bunch of a bunch of decadron or prednisone or something uh, exactly yeah. and just to explain and, yeah viva to highlight to highlight something about the canadian i mean it's probably the same elsewhere but especially in socialized yeah. you know free healthcare. It, you know when you have the symptoms yeah, they come and they go and you get to the hospital if you don't have the symptoms they're not going to do anything and they'll send you back and they right. say kayla go get a neurologist we didn't have it i i didn't have a gp in canada for about two years i was lucky right. lucky enough to have like what they call a someone between a doctor and a nurse but it's an 18 month right. waiting list to get a gp so you say go go wait for some neurological tests and mri and whatever and then this happens in the interim but to be told i mean this is what enrages me about this is that we're living in a in a post jab world now where even doctors don't want to admit or even contemplate the obvious when maddie degary uh, the, the the kid who was who partook in the uh, trials for pfizer had I forget now what it was called. It was not traverse myelitis, but she had another uh, a similar neurological reaction. They said it's in her head. It's a tummy ache. And they wrote it out of the actual trials. They wrote her out of the trials. And to, I, I can't imagine the horror. When Kayla's telling me the story and the doctor's like, it's psychosomatic, it's psychiatric. And I said, well, what were you sitting up? Yeah. Were you moving? He's like, no, I was on my back paralyzed. And I have this doctor who refuses to even state the obvious telling me it's in my head. I mean, it's it's enraging. It's it's a, it's an absolutely broken system, but at least it's free in theory. Yeah. It's free. I mean, yeah. Come on now. Uh, was it Guillain Barre? Is that what uh, the Pfizer study? No, I, I, I'm going to have to. I'm, I'm, no. no, it was uh, for for Maddie well, I'll have to I'll have to pull it up, but I, I forgot now. It's it's interesting, and and you know uh, when we were rolling into this episode, those of you that were in the chat rooms and whatnot, we we played an episode we did with uh, Jessica Rose and uh, Joseph Fryman. And what he discovered was the way they determine whether or not a VAERS report or even a specifically uh, identified major vaccine reaction by the FDA is related to the vaccine is they have a guy, they send a guy out, just a guy. Yeah, there's no such thing as that. Imagine if they'd sent a guy out to decide for Pfizer or the FDA to decide whether Vioxx was causing heart attacks. If you just sent a guy out to study it, he would come back and say, no, it's not. Heart attacks happen. Vioxx is commonly prescribed. Only eight cases. It's, it's sporadic. No big deal. And even if it is a big deal, Vioxx is such a great drug. I mean, that's the world we live in. And it, it is, I, and I don't see any change in sight. Today, I saw Paul off it. This is something that's driving me a little crazy. He was pushing very hard on vaccinating under age five, okay? And look, uh, uh, I get it during Alpha and Delta. It, it, it was not irrational during Alpha and Delta because it was, that was a bad illness and it killed some kids. And, and pediatric, pediatricians have zero risk tolerance when it comes to dying children which i i don't know I, I don't know if we all sign on to that or not or i don't i'm not a pediatrician so i don't understand uh when adults we have lots of risk tolerance in terms of years of life lost for a child it's an entire life loss that's a major tragedy so there's little tolerance for children losing their life now trying to be determine whether a vaccine has a lesser series of risks associated with it than the illness itself that of course is a difficult thing. I would say with COVID, Alpha, and Delta, I'm I'm going to accept that it was a reasonable thing. What's driving me insane is we live in a new world of Omicron that does not have any real significant consequences, and they're still quoting data from 20 and 21, which was a different illness. And then it did make sense, and 800 kids did die. Now, I I, I spent the afternoon trying to trying to find any documentation of how many children had died, let's say, the month of December 2023. You cannot find it. You cannot find well, it. Drew, yeah. I, don't know if the, I don't know what the numbers are. I, I, I would like to look into whether or not 800 kids actually died from COVID versus with COVID because I don't think they were making that distinction yes. back in the day. In Canada, the, numbers, it, the number they attribute is like under 30. And now that we know that one kid who they attributed to a death with COVID was a 14-year-old with stage 4 brain cancer who was in a coma and they just tested him before he passed... Um, and he had COVID and they chalked it up to a COVID death. I, I, I would question how many children actually died from COVID. But on that issue, what's amazing is when Kayla goes to the hospital, luckily, I mean, I say luckily in the, in the most sinister of ways, she tested negative for COVID. So they couldn't blame it on a COVID infection. But you know damn well 
Had she tested positive for COVID, even if she had it six months ago, they would have said, oh yeah, you're traverse, transverse myelitis. That's from the COVID viral infection, not from the jab. And they would have just chalked it up to that. And now they have no alternative. All right, so, so they have to finally acknowledge that it, it was probably caused by the jab. So, so that's a super common thing that's happening these days, which is without adequate data, people are saying, oh, it's COVID, not the vaccine. Well, in that same breath, if they really want to be accurate, why not COVID and the vaccine? That pretty much covers everybody too. Or why, why do we? How, how do we possibly know it's not both? That's what I've been saying for two years. It's either COVID or vaccine or COVID plus vaccine. But please, let's sort it out. Let's figure out what the deal is. Oh, no, well, Drew, I, I, I've gotten into a fight with a, you know, purported alleged doctors on the Twitter sphere. And two of these doctors who are still pushing this crap admit that they got myocarditis. One admits that they got myocarditis from, I believe it was the Moderna jab. The other one says, yeah, I got myocarditis, but it was from a COVID infection, not from any one of the multiple jabs I took prior to. And I'm like, you're the doctor <laughs> and I'm the lawyer. That doesn't make any sense. But to know that it's just, it's, it's the treatment that Kayla got as a result of this. We were all tormented into this irrational fear of, look at the beginning, I was, I was tremendously fearful as well. But you get coerced into taking these shots. And then when she suffers a, a, an adverse reaction, it's it, like, it's an act of bravery for one of the doctors to whisper to her, I know, she got it on the recording. Yeah, this is, I've seen a lot of it. It's from the jab. And then they all, and then they say, well, we can't really take so, care of you. Sorry, you've been paying into the system. Now we offer you right. Mates. So this is this is because you know I'm I don't have Kayla's medical record. I wasn't you know don't haven't seen all the uh, radiographic imaging and whatnot. I I don't want to start to wade into what does Kayla have because Kayla tells us her history. I will accept her history on, on, on the way she tells it. The part I am most interested in is how she was marginalized and then given maids. That, that to me, is the really unfortunate, uh, Kayla, I'm sorry, but the really interesting part of your story. So tell us how that happened, how they decided to offer you, what's it, was medication-assisted medical suicide? Assist how, medical what, assistance in dying. Call it, uh, yeah, sorry. Medical so um, the first time I was just on the, a unit and... Um, you know, they had told me that, uh, you know, I wasn't going to get any better and that um, even if I went to rehab, I wouldn't regain control over my bladder or my bowel and my life was going to be, you know, shortened. And um, now with a major comorbidity that um, it wasn't, I needed to really think about whether it was a type of lifestyle that I wanted to live. Um, and it was, wait, 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 stop, again. stop right there. Stop, stop right there. That, that, that already needs a little examination. So here you are, you're a, you're an insulin dependent diabetic and yes. now you have quadriplegia and they're saying this isn't the lifestyle you want to live. That's such an odd construct. Are those actually the words they use? Well, they're, they're asking me if it's the lifestyle, if it's, if it's, you know, to consider if it's a type of lifestyle that I, I would be able to. Yeah, I, but to but they use the word, but I, Kayla, what I'm zeroing in on, they use the word lifestyle, which is just so yeah. odd. It's so odd to me. And it's like, is, is if you get a cancer diagnosis and you need some chemo and we're more likely to, you know, we're likely to give you a good outcome. Is that the kind of lifestyle you want to live? Somebody who takes chemo and has a history of chronic severe illness? It, it's just I, the word lifestyle True. doesn't belong here. Viva, you agree with me? Uh, oh, I, 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 I'm trying. I'm biting my tongue because I have only expletives to say right now. They, they set aside. Like, <laughs> if it were any other circumstance and they did this, it would be equally as atrocious. I, I consider Kayla to have been injured by government policy, government harassment, government intimidation. That's that's my belief. People can disagree with me or not. They do this. And then they say, well, it's going to cost us a little more than we, you know, it's going to cost us too much to keep you alive. What, what, what good is it? Uh, I mean, it's, 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 it, there was yeah. a CBC article from 2019, 2020, as Canada and Trudeau's Hitlerian regime are ramping up euthanasia. And the, the, the CBC ran an article that said, don't worry, it's not going to add cost to the healthcare system. Uh, euthanasia might actually save the system money. I was like, yeah, that's the problem. That's when you have the economic considerations that overtake humane considerations. Sorry, Kayla, you were going to say something. No, that's, I was just totally agreeing with you. It was, it was my understanding after the second time, which was somewhat of a similar quick, quicker passing. Um, I actually was reading the email because uh, 
I just read it. Uh, yeah, it was, I think it was yesterday, but I, w- I was actually, um, I was agreeing that uh, it seemed like I was going to cost the system between two illnesses so much money, so much care. And I was also thinking they were offering me long-term care. And I'm thinking, you know, there's all these baby boomers. There's nowhere for people to go in Canada. We're running out of housing We're for just general population. And we're running out of long-term care and things like that. So, or, or people that they need to be built and we're way understaffed here. Like I'm sure you guys are there and it's, it's just so much easier to, I, I hate to say it, but dispose of people who, you know, might be just a burden on the healthcare system. So to be quite completely honest, I highly considered it. I mean, I, um, I even uh, emailed the number, like the, the lady, they gave me a, um, sorry, uh, an email address and uh, I emailed her to find out more information because to be honest, it, it's not a life that I, that I want to be living. It's, it's horrible. Um, it's, it breaks havocs on your emotions. You're, I'm stuck in a, I might as well be stuck in a hospital room. Um, And sometimes I think, um, you know, but I also have a young son and, um, but that there are days, I mean, it can be day to day that I think, well, maybe they're, maybe they're right. Maybe it is a good idea. You know, maybe it is better, but then I also have to look at my own, you know, my own faith, my own beliefs and, and just trying to make it day by day. But, I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. I, I highly considered it until I started to really kind of put the pieces together. And I realized like they had said something. I remember one of the, the comments the doctor made, he said, we actually did three euthanasias this morning. It's, it's not difficult. Um, people, they, you know, they don't it's, suffer. It's so disgusting. Oh, it's so it, disgusting. I remember oh, we were in the hospital oh. and, and I can uh, hear, I could also hear. Nothing to it. Hear, no, and I could also it's so hear easy. A man, just run the flu, run the potassium, the potassium iodine, just throw it in, no problem. Easy, yeah. easy peasy. All right, guys, hold on one second. I, I, I'm gonna hold on. I, I got a million questions. Wait, right, right, let her hold. finish. Let her finish. Okay, finish, Kayla. I could hear a man down the hallway, and he had come in with some sort of. It sounded like breathing issues that were really severe. And the doctor was kind of yelling into his ear because he couldn't hear him, I don't think, properly. And he's like, you have to decide if you want to live like this or if you want us to stop, like, your medical treatment. Your wife can come here and we can set up, um, we can set up MAID or you could, we could take you off the machines. Like, it was just a buzz, like a new fad. And it, it's they're, they're going to take advantage of the most vulnerable people on earth the ones who are in those states who don't have family sticking up for them it's uh, it's utterly disgusting i mean it's utterly disgusting I, i'm not against uh you know a terminally ill person decided to do it my my, my, my father-in-law had pancreas right. uh, it was not pancreas. it was it was you know it, there's a moment where you're not going to get any yeah. better but there's yeah. a, there's also a, a, right. a person where they're, they're supposed to offer treatment and not offer to off you because it's they they can't uh bear the costs anymore it's 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 inhumane right, right. Sorry. So that that's what I want to get into. I want to, I want to wade into the weeds a little bit on these issues because it's complicated. I'm going to tell you what. I, I, I am very much in favor of people having more command over their end of life. But, boy, you have to put safeguards in place. And uh, we, this whole conversation sounds as though almost none of that exists in Canada. I, I, I don't know if it does or doesn't. But that if uh, if money becomes the priority, then we are in big, big, big trouble. Viva Fry is with us. Uh, Kayla joins us as well. Uh, Kayla, where do you want people to find you? Do you want people to f- uh, follow you on social media or anything? Um, is Do you have my gives and go there, um, Viva? Yes. I Yeah, you guys, they, they the definitely screen. have it in the description. As, as well as... It's Dr. up on I'll the screen. Show you your, I'll shut your lawyers out, Kayla, because they deserve to be shouted out. Uh, Umar Sheik, S. H E I K H chiclaw.ca. Uh, he's representing uh, Kayla and um, Dan Hartman, who's Sean Hartman's father, suing Pfizer, and uh, he's doing the Lord's work. It's uh, someone's got to do it. All right, we're gonna take a little break and be right back. The parallel economy has empowered us to care for our health, well-being, as well as longevity. 
Likewise, for us pet parents who now have a place to go when it comes to keeping the family dogs, cats, even horses in the best shape possible. As a dog dad, I'm thrilled to be working with Pet Club 24-7, a company founded by two guys who lost dogs to serious conditions, including cancer. Pet Club 24-7 has an incredible array of products, including a line of supplements for humans, such as the Inforce Plus Corollius Versicolor and Inforce Corollius Versicolor with Reishi. For dogs, mush puppy treats are a fan favorite. Rex, went, oh boy, <laughs> he came right... Oh, there he is. They are also made with the Coriolis Versicolor Mushroom, which supports their immune system, according to hundreds of clinical studies. Here's Kristen Ludlow, National Vice President. That strain does matter. We do have the most potent strain, and we also extract it in a proprietary way. And that's why we've been having such wonderful experiences with these products. Mush puppies are made here in the U.S. There are no fillers. It's not addicting. Your dog can't accidentally overdose. Go to drdrew.com slash pet club 24-7 for discount off the list price that is drdrew.com p-e-t-c-l-u-b 247 pet club 247 are you one of the millions of american women and men dealing with premature hair thinning and hair loss or maybe you're scared about inheriting that thinning look because it runs in your family start 2024 with a real solution that delivers results without the harsh side effects or unwanted chemicals and no need for prescription. Provia uses a safe natural ingredient, Procapil, to effectively target the three main causes of premature hair thinning and hair loss. By supporting healthy scalp circulation, the delivery of nourishing nutrients, and healthy hair follicle anchoring to your scalp, Provia guarantees more hair on your head than in the shower or on your comb. Right now, new customers save over 50% plus free shipping. Every introductory package includes a full 60-day supply of Provia serum for daily use, plus the Provia Super Concentrate for faster, more noticeable results. Don't wait. Order now to save an extra 10% and get free shipping at ProviaHair.com forward slash Drew. That's P-R-O-V-I-A-H-A-I-R, ProviaHair.com slash D-R-E-W. As a physician, I am deeply concerned about efforts to erode the doctor-patient relationship. And as medical freedom continues to come under assault, I'm on a mission to empower you to be able to take care of yourselves and your family the way you want to. I urge you to get this medical emergency kit from The Wellness Company. It contains essential prescription medication you should really always have on hand. Here's Dr. Peter McCullough, Chief Scientific Officer. It's a very broad and diverse medical kit. can handle everything from a urinary tract infection, a fungal infection, a bronchitis. People can, you know, via telemedicine, uh, get their questions answered and get on the right track. But it's basically an at-home formula. Yep. For the first time, people, instead yep. of being... Uh, uh, held captive by an urgent care or by a doctor's office or an ER, they can actually do this themselves at home. Save yourself the weight and the hassle and feel better faster. Go to drdrew.com slash TWC for 10% off. That is drdrew.com slash TWC for 10% off the medical emergency kit. And there we go. The show is sponsored by BetterHelp. I want to tell you about our friends at BetterHelp. If you had unlimited free time, do you even know what you do with it? Sometimes we get so buried in our work and our routines that we forget what we're working for. Therapy can help you uncover what really matters to you. So you can do more of it. It can help you learn how to work for yourself instead of against yourself. And therapy isn't just for people who've experienced major trauma or, psych or psychological issues, BetterHelp's therapists can help you learn positive coping skills to benefit your everyday life and grow into the best version of yourself. And of course, I'm a fan of therapy. I've been a patient in therapy. I've been treating patients in a mental health context, and I've been pleased with BetterHelp and the services they provide. So if you're thinking of giving therapy a, a try, give BetterHelp a try. Entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and fits in your schedule. And by the way, no longer is any stigma an excuse. There's no waiting room, no nothing. You just fill out a short questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. Switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Dr. Drew Rumble. That's D-R-D-R-E-W-R-U-M-B-L-E. BetterHelp.com slash Dr. Drew Rumble today to get 10% off your first month. That is BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash Dr. Drew Rumble. One word. All right, we're bringing our guest back, Viva Fry. 
And of course, Kayla Pollock is with us as well, telling this uh, terrible story. No matter no matter how you, you know, people get into people fall into weird camps. No matter what story you're trying to tell, but poor Kayla uh, has had to suffer because of this. How how do you, Kayla, manage your day and day life? I want to talk about suicide and all that business in a second, but I'm wondering, do you have to have somebody a caretaker there with you all the time, or how does that work? Um, well, someone has to do all my basic functions, getting me out of bed every morning, um, coming in the day. Um, I'm left alone most of the time, but um, I can't, uh, I have a catheter bag and uh, I can't do any bowel functions by myself. So, um, you know, and the Canadian medical system doesn't get anyone to do that. So if you don't have a friend or family member that's willing to do that for you, you go straight to long-term care. Right, to a, to a nursing home, essentially. And you said yeah. that at one point you were co actually contemplating using the medical-assisted, uh, again, it's such a, it's a disgust, it's such a weird euphemism, it gets caught in my craw, it I can't is. say it. Medically-assisted, what? What is it? End yeah, of life, assist, what, what do they call it, me me Medical assistance in medical dying. Medical assistance in, in dying, genius. Um, that when they were coming to you offering this, you you contemplated it. And what I'm wondering is, have you ever had suicidal thoughts at other times in your life? Did they ask you about suicide? Did this seem like you were contemplating suicide when you were actually responding to what they were offering you? Um, I had had thoughts of it in my previous lifetimes, uh, experience with that hospital. Um, at the time, I just wanted care and I was seen by a psychiatrist and everything who said like, you know, she's back here basically saying that she's not getting enough care. And that's again, when they, they offered made the second time. Um, but yeah, I, I highly considered it. Like I said, I mean, I even went as far as to call the, the, um, or not to call, but to email, um, because it seems like if you can't be treated and you're going to end up in a long-term care facility, you don't have family. It, you just, it, it just seems like this perfect solution, at, at, you know, at a, at a, a very um, vulnerable time. I mean, this vulnerable. isn't even a year. Yeah. We're not even talking like a year later. Like we're not even talking past the grief stage. We're not talking, you know, they gave, they gave, uh, about three three months of ca of counseling after I became quadriplegic. That's all I. Um, that's all I was. Uh, um, that's all they would give me. Um, In vivo, you but, want to say something? Uh, no, I just want to say that like, forget past the grief stage. They're offering it when they're not even past the potential healing stage. This is why it just it, it it's right. enraging, that's and there's right. no better word for it. They they're, they're basically telling Kayla. We don't think you're going to get any better, which is already a devastating thing to say. And I'm not sure how medically accurate it could be within the first year. It's, it's, it, it, no, first year they can get better. They can get better. In fact, so, it's, I think, more common than not. But yes, they and can so get they better say, they first say, year. Imagine they say, we don't think you're going to get better. We're not going to help you get better. And we're going to offer you to, to to end your life because it's cheaper for us. I mean, and Drew, uh, Kayla, I, I don't know if Kayla knows the details because I've been I've been talking about you know the medical assistance in dying. I'm, I'm calling it I'm calling it the mercy killings. That's what it was called back in the day. Um, you know, mm. the, the they they made an ad this com this company called Simon's Clothing. It's a it's a retail clothing store. They made an ad celebrating the life and euthanasia death of a woman named Jennifer Hatch, and. It was this movie. It was this three-minute video called "All Is Beauty," describing her choice to end her life. And it turns out that Jennifer Hatch didn't have a terminal illness. She suffered from Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, and oh boy. she ended up. It turned out that she wanted to live, but she couldn't get adequate care from the Canadian uh, healthcare system, and so they ended her life. There was a woman who had multiple chemical sensitivity that just needed adequate lodging, and the government gr granted her euthanasia. And then they offer it to uh, veterans. They offer it to Kayla, who they should be treating and doing everything under the sun to make better, given that I do chalk this up to their act or, or coercion. And instead of even helping her get better or helping her deal with the harm that the government has imposed on her, they then say it'll be cheaper and easier for us to end your life and take advantage of a person in their most vulnerable moment, where if Kayla didn't have a, a son, 
I think he was seven, seven or eight at the time. Who knows what would have happened? I mean, it's it's just it's disgusting. It's evil. There's there's no other word for it. Sorry. Well, and and what 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 I'm struggling with here again, I I think end of life should be as as graceful and uh, um, sort of dignified as any other part of life when there's no other options or when the misery associated with going on is so profound that these seem like sensible options. But this sounds like not medical, this sounds like not medical assistance in dying. This sounds like assistance state in suicide. Sanctioned, this state sounds like, sanctioned murder. It's, it's state sanctioned murder. Well, it, 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 it could it, be murder, some, but, it, but it's also a suicide, right? I mean, they, think about it. Think about it. The, I, I, I have Ellers down. Let's take the other case. I have Ellers down. I have a lot of pain. I can't get adequate care, so I'm going to kill myself. I want to kill myself no, because no, no, I can't true, get true. what I need from the from the government. It's crazy. Except, I, I, not to not to quibble over semantics, except it's not you doing it. It's a government injecting you with something that that kills you. They get the authorization from the government. In in many jurisdictions, encouraging someone to commit suicide is a crime. In, in men, not everywhere, but in some jurisdictions. It, but when the government does it, it's yeah. not a crime anymore. When the government does it, they give it a, a beautiful little euphemism, medical assistance in dying. There was a Forbes article that compared this to the Nazi era mercy killings. Uh, and, and, and when oh, you course. see how it's being weaponized and abused, there's no other way to look at it. So it's all that to say, yeah, Kayla okay. has now got, you got, she got, you got a network of people who are, or everyone is doing everything they can to help. Uh, but it's it's the government, you know, le injures people and then leaves them to fend for themselves and crowdsource their own existence where the government should be doing this, had the obligation to do it, and then absconded. Kayla, what's happening now? What, what, what are you, how are you dealing? What, what are the, how, how's the case going? What, what's happening currently? Um, I haven't regained any function in two years. Like I said, it's gotten a lot worse. Um, Unfortunately, it's uh, it isn't MS. There were no lesions or anything. Um, they did keep track of that and they ruled out everything else. But uh, I think that, like you said, uh, it's a one in three chance that you'll either um, completely get better, get better with some um, some neurological impairment that causes discomfort or that you'll become severely disabled. And um I'm not saying that once you're severely disabled that you can't get some functions back, but once you hit the, you know, they say the two, the two year mark, usually um, that yeah. the, the likelihood is just very unlikely based on, I guess, what's set in with your body and the spinal cord being essentially the nerves and everything just being, you know, fried. So it, it can be really and difficult in terms of the, you know, the legal case what's going on with that um viva do you want to i i well i'm not i'm not the lawyer in the file this is in an ontario provincial court i only practiced out of quebec but i did get the lawsuit from umar sheik her lawyer who's also representing uh dan hartman suing pfizer it's interesting like uh, I, I read the lawsuit it's a pretty straightforward you know negligence breach of fiduciary breach of duty uh you know the the act first things first people were asking me how is it that um Anybody can sue the pharma companies in Canada if they've been given immunity. And that was the first question I had to ask is, in Canada, there's no immunity under the PREP Act, so there's no bar to lawsuits. What apparently was negotiated into the contracts between the Canadian government and Pfizer Moderna were indemnification clauses. So there's no uh, procedural or legal bar to suing the companies. They might be able to call the government in warranty and say, you agreed to hold us harmless. So if we're ordered to pay Kayla anything, you're going to pay us and, and, and compensate us for that. The lawsuit's pretty straightforward. Mm. You know, Moderna never had a product, never had a, a, a medical product. Go to, they never had a product before. And Pfizer, you know, the veterinarian CEO, they're, they're dabbling with, with mRNA for the first time ever. And I mean, you, you go back and watch uh, Burla talk about it. It was very counterintuitive, but they were very persuasive. I said, persuasive with two dollar signs for the S's. But, you know, so these companies were making statements and affirmations about safety efficacy without warning anybody about any potential risks. And everybody knows with, with any vaccine, and even if it's a real bona fide vaccine, there are risks. They, 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 they sensitize you to them. They mention them to you. However rare they are, they mention them. With COVID, it became right. Voldemort. Couldn't even, couldn't even suggest that there would be uh, potential side effects, let alone the ones that they probably knew, probably hid, probably you know found a way to figure out of their stats by excluding Maddie DeGarry from the trials. 
The, the lawsuit alleges that Moderna made statements that had no business making, didn't do follow-ups aftermarket, uh, and, you know, by and large, probably lied to the government. So it's uh, my yeah. fingers are crossed for the lawsuit, but that's that's the extent of the Moderna and the uh, Dan Hartman, Sean Hartman's father against Pfizer is basically the same the same legal basis. And AstraZeneca actually had yeah. their trial stopped at one point in time for a transverse malaitis case. As you said, it can be it can be um, caused by different things, but uh, it can be right after vaccines or within, you know, eight weeks after six to eight weeks after a vaccine. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen yeah. it in your practice, but um, I have. I've, I've had a case. I had a case and she had permanent disability from it. Yep. I, yeah. I just had to Google in real time to make sure that I'm that I'm not misstating the facts. Moderna had never had distributed a product before. And all of a sudden they come out with an mRNA technology that's what's the word when you not sacrosanct, but you can't even you can't even question it. They come out and make public statements, right. warranties and representations, 100 percent effective at what? Lord knows, safe and effective. They don't tell right. they didn't sensitize Kayla to any of the potential side effects that are known with any foreign body entering a foreign you know, body entering a human body. And uh, and and they didn't do yeah. any aftermarket follow up. The, the the various reports in the states existed for a reason. It was supposed to indicate signals that should cause pharma companies to look into those signals. These were bona fide signals, yeah. and they knew it, and they probably concealed it. So hopefully this succeeds past a certain point, and maybe we can get some discovery with what I believe are criminal organizations. You, you mentioned it before, Drew, but like Pfizer and Johnson and Johnson, two of the three top uh, criminal settlements in pharma history. It's, it's a coincidence. Two of the three of them are, are, are the two of the three that produce these, uh, these jabs. It's, it's amazing, but you don't trust them. They're, they're, they're much different now than they were a decade ago. Right. I, there, there are so many crazy aspects to all this. When, when you, when you, one, another way to look at Aviva is it's amazing, given the speed with which these things were rolled out, amazing things were much worse when you really get down to it. Well, and you know, what's, it's, what's it's, astonishing is but what's astonishing is no one wants to find out how bad is it. You, you just don't want to know. And that that's the part. And, and they're relying on these observational studies of lots of people. I get it. There's been a lot of people that were observed. Uh, gosh, I, there was one just last week that came out on uh, a million plus people. Uh, and it was, the, it, was, it was a very odd study. The first, first thing, 150,000 people dropped out. No documentation about what happened to that 150,000. Secondly, they only looked at vaccine reactions after the first 45 days. And then if they found somebody with a vaccine reaction 45 days going forward, they looked back to see if that person had been hospitalized, not anyone else in that 45-day window. It was really odd. And, th and that I keep seeing over and over and over again, where you know they're using endpoints that are weird. How many ICU hospitalizations? But that none of it had anything to do with COVID in, in, a, in a study I saw on pregnant women. True. None of it True. was COVID. It was all other causes. What's that? The, 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 a recent a recent stat out of the UK, you know who Neil Oliver is? Uh, he was on GB News, Scottish guy, amazing. Uh, he, he, he suggested that the excess deaths out of the UK were linked or, you know, linked potentially to the rollout of the jab. Not the jab itself, but the rollout. He gets fact-checked okay. by Reuters. Reuters comes out and says, yeah, sure, there's been about 75,000 excess deaths since I think it's 22 to 23 in the UK, but there's no evidence to link it to the jab. How the hell can there be evidence to link it to the jab when you're not looking for it? When you look for any other excuse right. under the sun. And then the bottom line also, it's a it's a lose-lose situation. It's either tied to the jab or it's not, or partially. One way or the other, post-pandemic, having 75,000 excess deaths out of the UK, something sinister is going on. Uh, and it's undeniable. But, you know, don't don't suggest it's related to the jab. Well, it's uh, energy drinks. It's uh, stress. It's the environment. <laughs> it's whatever other bullshit excuse they want to find. Yeah. And, and look, I'm prepared to accept that it is uh, related to COVID itself. But how do you parse out the contribution of vaccine? How do you know it's not both? That really is the issue because spike seems to be the major source of pathogenesis and both create a lot of spike. And to me, just my simple brain thinks, you know, by simple deduction, I'm guessing that both of them have some role to play here because spike is the problem. And and if one spike doesn't prevent the second spike, like Albert Bourla told us in an April 1st, 2021 tweet, if one spike doesn't prevent you from getting the second spike, are you not compounding spikes? And that's not a tremendously difficult question to ask even for a dumb lawyer.
And, you know, I was getting uh, regular <laughs> so, tests just because um, I work for a school board. And so vaccinated or not, you had to get, you were had to be tested um, every few days or at least that was recommendation. And I was so paranoid being around kindergarten children that I was testing. And um, as far as I know, if I've ever had coronavirus, it would have been before I, it ever, like before it was a known thing because it, it you know, never had, never been sick after that. Um yeah. or anything but yeah. i think the hardest part is that people don't th th they keep asking me like well you know if you're um if you're telling the truth and your story was at all relevant wouldn't it be all over the mainstream media and i had no idea how like censored the media was until this all came oh, yeah. up like until this came out i had no idea i mean i'd like to think yeah. i'm like decently educated for yeah. 30 seconds no, especially I, in I canada yeah I'm they're the not same. allowed to watch that. fox news way. in canada is that, I mean, right? is that true no they're not no, no, it's no, hysterical they, they want they want to ban you know ban fox news and keep tucker out of the country it's it's wild i mean this is another element of a captured industry is media legacy media in canada is either financed by the government which makes it no better than Pravda, or it's inherently uh, reliant on government ads, government subsidies, they, they will not talk about it for the life of them. A any more than Fox News will talk about it because they get a lot of pharma ad dollars as well. So it's uh, it, it, Kayla and others have had to rely on independent media. I, I'll, I'll bring him up again, just like Dan Hartman, Sean Hartman's son. The media still hasn't touched it. The, the kid has now gotten, con the, the dad's gotten confirmation his son's death was related to the jab, uh, where he had... Um, uh, they did slides of his uh, uh, gland. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess up. It doesn't matter the details. Um, it's confirmed. With, with Kayla, the doctor himself said, yes, and we've seen lots of it. Kayla, what's the status of your vaccine injury support program application? Um, I got a phone call. The first, they lost the first one a year late. Like by, for a year, I was strung along to believe they had it. I would call, and, and uh, then they said they lost it. And I thought, oh, my goodness, why would I bother to put this in again. And then I thought, you know what, I'm going to do it. Um, because you know, I need care. And unfortunately it seems like only money talks because our money is not being put into healthcare or whatever. Apparently our tax dollars, I mean, I think 50 cents of every dollar you make, uh, 25% of that goes to, uh, healthcare in Canada, but we, we have a really hard, far way to go. And I think that's also kind of why I step forward because I don't think people realize that, you know, this could, you know, this could be anybody. I mean, I didn't yeah. take the vaccine any more than, you know, we, I, I think it was, we had like an 86% um, uh, Canadians took at least one oh. vaccine. So any one of 86 yeah. of a hundred people could be sitting in my wheelchair right now. Drew, you imagine they don't they don't have enough they don't have enough money for the system for the likes of people who they've injured like Kayla but they can go ship another 3 billion dollars to Ukraine with however many million and Drew I'm not joking about this allocated to transgender people going into demine Ukraine this is what the government does with our money 3 billion dollars to Ukraine uh, but hey Kayla we don't have the means for you so have you considered killing yourself in in it, it, it's what was that? Oh, the, the other one there, uh, an, another amazing squandering of Canadian tax dollars, the Arrive Can app, which was this app, Drew, that you uh, downloaded on your phone so the government could track everything that you did during COVID. When you come back, it tells you to go to quarantine. It, the app was supposed to cost $80,000. The estimates for how much they squandered on that app is now $60 million. But, mate, some, someone who they've injured needs well, human, human treatment. They don't have enough money for that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> somebody, somebody is on uh, on Rumble saying, with all due respect, Drew, people are tired of hearing maybe it's COVID. How many distinguished guests have you had clearly and explicitly refute the notion that it's just COVID, it's the vaccine? Yeah, uh, I don't disagree. I you, you, People have come on and made convincing cases. We've not brought in people that want to make the convincing cases on the COVID itself because there's a lot of data out there that suggests there is a problem. But... It's very confusing. And the reason I keep bringing up both sides is until somebody really does a systematic review. So this was going to be my next point, Viva, which is 
we have some of the MPs in the British Parliament now starting to speak up and go, there's a problem here with excess deaths. And literally, they empty the room when they come up and bring this topic up. And my question would be, is there or is there not excess deaths? Oh, there is? There, there, there isn't, is, this a na- isn't this a national emergency? I don't care what the cause is. Isn't this a national emergency to well, once and for all determine what the cause of this is? Oh, and Drew, in the UK, when they were fact-checking Neil Oliver, they say, oh, yeah, well, actually, the excess death is higher among the unvaccinated than the vaccinated. I'm like, oh, that's because Mm -hmm. possibly you count as an unvaccinated death someone who dies within two weeks of the jab. I mean, there's what's the what's the expression? There's liars, damn liars and statistics. I mean, it's just there is an easy way to fudge the data so that it yields the result that you want. Bottom line, excess death in the UK. Excess death in Canada. I think it's the first time causes of deaths of unknown causes has surpassed dementia as as cause of death. That just and throw into the mix euthanasia being the third leading cause of death in Quebec and accounting for 4.2 percent of death in Canada. And you can actually, you know, even reduce some of the other numbers of the excess death by doing that. I also you know, it'd be really interesting to see came, uh, the rare side effects came. Um, um, above all of the minor, like the the serious side effects, including death, um, if I'm not mistaken, came ahead of things like sore arm, and they grouped them all kind of in together with the data. But I know that was something that uh, my lawyer and I had spoken about. It's just some of the ways that that they were able to not disclose their data, or they were able to just reverse it. Um, or just, you know, and, and I guess that's why, you know, um, I thought, I don't know where I'm going to get with this. It's going to be more of a headache. There's no amount of money you could pay me to ever go through this. Uh, to me, I of always course. used to say, I, it, it feels like I've been locked up in jail for a crime that I did not commit. And, um, um. you know, I'd, I'd rather just, you know, at least fight them and see if I can at least one day have the care that I need as I age so that I don't have to go into, or even if I'm still fighting this in a nursing home, you know? And, and let me uh, point out to people that, you know, quadriplegia, you know, people imagine it being bad enough, not being able to move your limbs, but skin breakdown, urinary tract infections. I mean, it gets to be really intense, the medical problems that develop if you're not properly attended to. You know, I was thinking of the other ways they distort stuff. I, I was, I've been thinking about my own case lately, guys. And uh, that was somebody who came out after me on Twitter. They put up an interview I did where I talked about how miserable Alpha or Delta, whichever I had, the initial wave of COVID was for me when I had it and all the long COVID symptoms I had, which completely resolved, completely resolved. I don't have any ongoing symptoms from it. It was miserable. It was a nasty illness. I've had Omicron a couple of times since. One time I didn't even know I had it. I just infected everybody around me. So I finally knew I had it. It's so mild. And I took the J&J vaccine and had a major vaccine reaction. I was seriously vaccine injured. I woke, there's my eye, I woke up with that raccoon's eye, which is the presenting sign of a transverse sinus uh, thrombosis which is what killed people with the vaccine. So I had essentially a potentially near-death experience with the vaccine, and I had misery with COVID, but it left me with no consequence, thank God. But the vaccine could have been the thing that killed me. I was never in any danger of dying from COVID, ever. Uh, in fact, when people would ask me, were you scared? I, would th- I, I was bewildered by that question because the probability of me dying of COVID was less than 1% given what I had, and I had a magnificent response to monoclonal antibodies and to Decadron and all the things we could do to treat COVID that no one in public health was telling anybody at the time. That was the thing that drove me insane. And then because we went to Europe, so uh, we had to take the vaccines and then I had a major vaccine reaction. The other thing is, it's interesting to me, Vivo, when you're describing some of the uh, excesses of the Canadian government, boy, it sure sounds familiar. And again, the media too. It sure sounds the same as down here. It certainly sounds the same as California. So California and Canada have become uh, 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 like-minded organizations. I I was going to say, yeah, but I think Canada's three times worse. I I won't be able to check the stat. Now, I'm fairly certain Canada's euthanasia rate is three times that of California, despite a similar population size. 
it, it, it's it's look I, it's, but, it's, well we have it here but we actually seem to be using it properly listen i am not against euthanasia you know it's per se i'm against mercy killings and i'm against encouraging people and i'm and i am categorically against suicide medically assisted this it shouldn't be suicide right that you should specifically exclude suicide from the from the equation it should be when death becomes a necessary an imminent outcome and an important part of keeping dignity and comfort okay then it's a part of treatment it's not suicide it's not assisted suicide it's a terrible word that's what it is and it's uh, you have to read the the way the canadian government describes the the transit, the evolution of euthanasia in Canada. It started off as the Supreme Court saying you could not constitutionally deny the, the, the right to someone who's terminally ill to end their life with dignity. And then it expanded to the mentally ill. The, you mentioned the, the mentally ill, people who are suffering from something that compromises their ability to consent. And then you offer them and they can consent to ending their life. Then they want to extend it to minors. They want to extend it to minors who can't consent. And so then you rely on the parents to consent to euthanizing a child who doesn't even necessarily need to be terminally ill. I mean, they used to make jokes about post-birth uh, post abortions. They used to make jokes about that. And what you're basically getting into is a world where that joke, has, sick joke, has become reality, at least in Canada, under the Trudeau regime. So congratulations to him. May he live forever. I've seen some interesting and memes Akela on the internet related to that today. Yeah, I bet. And, and, and Kayla, when you met with a psychiatrist, did, did he or she have any any concerns about moving towards maids? Where was he or she running interference in any way, or, or were they he were they part was, of the treatment team? Um, he was a really great guy. Um, he just said, like you know, you're not crazy. You just you know. Um, you know, there's nothing like you don't need medications or anything like that. Um, you just want you just want more care. And he said, and there are a lot of vaccine injuries. And he said that he wasn't really a, a big fan of the vaccine himself and that there were not I wasn't alone. If I if, the, you know, in vaccine injuries that he'd seen quite a few um, uh, people coming in with loved ones that had died of like myocarditis and things like that. And he shook my hand and he says, I think you were brave for coming and and just, you know, trying to get more help for yourself because um, I was like, I'm not going home. It, like, you're going to keep me here until I go home and there's something more. And then, you know, my 21 hours a week got cut to five hours a week. And like, yeah. it, it's just, it's not enough. I mean, if someone doesn't show up, I can't roll over. I can't turn myself in bed. I can't do anything. And it's very painful. I know a week, lot how of did you, yeah. They can't. Oh, yeah. Roll, how does your skin not break down? Yeah. It, 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 What's that? It uh, does. No, I'm saying, and, and, and they, 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 they make Kayla go crowdfund for a dignified existence. I mean, what more of a, of a failure of government can you possibly uh, uh, imagine in, in, in real life? And that's if disability yeah, doesn't go uh, away. And and again, I, I'm wondering. I mean, there's two. You know, we're 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 skating through multiple different landscapes here. One is obviously the the medical medical assistance in dying, the issue of suicide, the issue of it being radical to suggest that young males may have more of a risk from the vaccine than from COVID itself. Uh, I think that's pretty much borne out in the in the scientific literature now. Why that's a radical thing to say, and on the heels of being so uh, obfuscating so severely the truth, now people aren't getting their the kids aren't getting their measles vaccines. We're going to have major measles outbreak. We're going to we're going to have problems with not vaccinating because people are going against the system entirely. They can't trust anything, and we're going to end up with some big problems because of that. Viva, I'll, I'll give uh, Kayla last you. words, but you're, you, you, well, it's uh, everything, it seems like every bad idea did start in Canada these days, but uh, <laughs> Kayla, Viva, I'll let you, tell, I'll let you talk about, finish, I'm have Kayla give final words, but I'll let you give the final sort of rundown on the legal case and uh, the guys doing God's oh. work there on her behalf. B bottom line, chiclaw.ca, I'll be following it and I'll be covering it as soon as there are any updates in both Sheila's case and Dan Hartman's case. And uh, everybody knows where to find me, but if you could, 
give to the Give, Send, Go for Sheila. And I, times are hard for everybody. If you, if you can't afford to, at the very least, share it and spread the word of the story because this should be uh, a, I mean, w- one of many stains on the Trudeau regime's legacy on Canada. And before I, I get to Kayla's last words, uh, anything coming up on uh, Vivan Barnes or View a Fry Show? Oh, well, yeah, tomorrow I'll be live streaming the Fanny Willis. I mean, the, the distraction from the, 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 the fun legal distractions, Fanny Willis, Nathan Wade, motion to disqualify out of the Fulton County, Georgia court. Uh, closing arguments tomorrow. So I'll be streaming that. And uh, Sunday show coming up in usual, we'll be talking about this and other stuff as well. And then, Kayla, I want you to uh, give whatever final word you'd like to give to the audience. Um, I really just hope things can change. I hope that me stepping forward um, can change things in Canada or that people can hold our politicians more accountable for where we're spending our money. I mean, we, you know, we're supposed to have this wonderful level of, of government and help health care. And I, I hope that, uh, I hope that the crowdfunding can sort of give me um, somewhat of a life because um it's not a it's not a productive, um, happy life to to be um, the way I am right now with the with the very um, very limited support that the government will give me. But I appreciate how you guys having me on my show or on your show. Sorry, not my show. Um, I do want to also thank like the Canadian Independent for getting my story out there in the uh, in the beginning, and you know Veterans for Freedom stepped up to make that that. Uh, that um, funding page for me and I know they're going to do uh, Operation uh, Kayla or something or Operation Kayla or something like that. There's going to be a website or something so that it can be a little bigger because my medical needs are never going to end and um, yeah. it's not all good. You, you, it, it, is, it, is a, it is a lifestyle is the word you used. I, I've bristled at that, but it is a, a, a new way of living, quite literally. Yeah. And you mentioned faith. We didn't dig into that very much. You mentioned it in passing at the early part of your comments. And I hope, uh, hope you can find faith in all this and uh, maybe lean on the faith community a little bit as well. Yeah. I've, uh, I think I've had to figure out what my purpose in this is and what, I mean, I did not want to be a politician. I did not want to be all over the internet having my business exposed but you know what um it was my son who said mom there might be someone out there that's like you who won't come forward or there might be someone who's really sad because they're quadriplegic and you know maybe you could help them and you know when it comes out of a nine-year-old's mouth it really puts it into perspective for you so um you know i really uh really took his advice and uh that's why i came forward i think there's a perfect as a reminder the discussions here are not a substitute for medical care diagnosis or treatment this show is intended for educational and informational purposes only i am a licensed physician but i am not a replacement for your personal doctor and i am not practicing medicine here always remember that our understanding of medicine and science is constantly evolving Though my opinion is based on the information that is available to me today, some of the contents of this show could be outdated in the future. Be sure to check with trusted resources in case any of the information has been updated since this was published. If you or someone you know is in immediate danger, don't call me, call 911. If you're feeling hopeless or suicidal, call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 800 273 8255. You can find more of my recommended organizations and helpful resources at drdrew.com slash help.